So Matt, you are the New England Regional Director of the Marijuana Policy Project, is that correct? New England Political Director. New England Political Director. All right, and so how long have you guys been working here in Vermont, and what's sort of the status of where we're at now? The Marijuana Policy Project's been working in Vermont for more than a decade. We've been involved since the, the first very limited medical marijuana law passed in 2004, and then we're involved with expanding it in 2007, adding dispensaries in 2009, passing decrim in 2013. And here we are, we've finally arrived at the point where people are ready to end marijuana prohibition and start regulating marijuana in some way we treat alcohol as a legal adult. Yeah. So what do you think about Vermont's sort of chances of being the first place on the East Coast? Do you think there's something about Vermont that makes it more or less likely, you know, and sort of how do we stand in relation to the rest of our competition now in August 2015? Well, I think Vermont's having its own conversation. These conversations are happening in lots of other East Coast states. Uh, a few of those states are ballot initiative states, so we know that Massachusetts and Maine will be on the ballot next mm -hmm. November. But Vermont is a state where the legislature is actually taking this very seriously and it will have to pass through the legislature. So there's a very good chance, actually, that it would be the first state to do it through the legislature. You have to get ahead of Rhode Island. They're pretty serious right. about it, too. <laughs> So you work with all these different states, you travel all around Vermont, all around New England, obviously. When you hear people talk about the Vermont way, <laughs> as somebody who's going to be moving to Vermont in the future, sort of, how do you see that being manifested when people are talking about cannabis? You know, what about the sort of Vermont culture are people trying to really imbue into this sort of industry? What part of the culture is there already? So far, the conversations have just been tremendously well informed. People are trying to learn everything they can about this from just a number of different perspectives. And whereas in Colorado and Washington, it passed, and then they had to figure out how to implement it. Right. <laughs> Here, we're way ahead of them, having already had these conversations so that if the when Vermont passes this bill next year, we're going to be ready to move forward. Yeah. You know, at the national level, we're going to have probably 10 states by the end of 2016. How do you think things are going to work long term as far as by 2020, some sort of federal legislation? I mean, at some point it'll be too big to ignore and there'll have to be some sort of uniformity. But on a bigger picture, how do you think this helps push the conversation and where are we down the road? It's, it's hard to have too much optimism about Congress and marijuana <laughs> ever, given the last 40 years. The first step is just to get them to change federal laws so that states like Vermont, if they want to move forward, can move forward without having federal laws confound the regulatory process. For example, by making businesses have to be cash only because of federal right. banking. Right? Usury bank policies. So, yeah. There's a bill that was introduced in the Senate that actually passed the Senate Banking Committee that would fix the stupid banking issue. Mm -hmm. Everybody ought to agree it's a bad situation. Right. And so maybe that happens this year. Maybe that happens this year. There's a good law called the Good Law called the Respect State Marijuana Laws Act that would just add sense to the Controlled Substances Act. It says the Controlled Substances Act doesn't, shouldn't be construed to, you know, right. infringe on the rights of states to do something different. So right. that, that would eliminate a lot of the conflict. States that want to continue prohibition will continue prohibition, but states like the four have already done so, and many more that we expect in the next couple of years, yeah. to be able to implement their policies without having to worry about what the feds are going to Unlike, for example, Colorado, where you were amending the Constitution after right. Amendment 64, there's limited fiddling <laughs> right. after that point. They're more passing this through the legislature, so if there are tweaks that they want to make down the road, they're going to be able to do that. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's right. get these processes started in, in 2016. Yeah. We'll let you end for the plug. The best way for people to get involved with MPP and learn more about you guys. Right. I'll answer the last question first. Right. <laughs> Our website's mpp.org and the Vermont Coalition that we've started is the Vermont Coalition to Regulate Marijuana. It's regulatevermont.org. Also on Facebook, also on Twitter. Uh, just getting on our email list is a nice start. Our position is that Vermont should end marijuana prohibition. We don't have a specific model that we're trying to impose on us. Right. We want Vermont to do it in a way that makes sense for Vermont. And that's where BPCC, that's where Vermont Homegrown, that's where a lot of other groups and individuals and stakeholders are chiming in and being part of this process. 
And of course the trick is going to be to figure out what we can all live with, whatever you want. Legislators can build majorities behind, get it through this committee, get it through that committee, pass the Senate, pass the House. We know we do have a governor that wants to sign it. Right. So working out a policy that does make sense to the majority of Vermonters and the majority of elected Vermonters right. is going to be the challenge. Good is right. We'll get there by January, be on the same page, pass a bill, have it go into effect next summer. I think we can.